One of the most common failures of iPhone is Face ID not working. This failure can be divided into two more common failures. The dot projector and the flex of the headset is not working or because of a failure in the IR illuminator that's in the proximity sensor, which is called Yogi. The first fault corresponds to a failure in the dot projector. The device will indicate that Face ID does not activate. Face ID has been disabled. A problem has been detected with Face ID. For more information, go to settings. Two. Face Face ID is not available. Try setting up Face ID later. It also states, a problem has been detected with the True Depth camera. 3. Another related bug is indicated in the interface as move iPhone a little higher or lower and it never locates. This failure could be because you've moved the front camera module from its exact place and that the thermal camera has moved. It could also be due to the quality problems due to a change of screen. So make sure before continuing with this procedure. The second fault is a little different and corresponds to the flexor that contains the Yogi. In this case, the device may display the message unable to activate Face ID on this phone. It may also display the same message as in the case of the first failure. It may also not recognize the whole face. In this video, we'll perform the repair for the dot projector failure of the True Depth camera. Both the diagnosis and the repair procedure applies in the same way for all models from iPhone 10 onwards. The other fault we'll cover in an upcoming video, along with changing the front camera without losing Face ID. So don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss it when it comes out. Before we get started with the process, we want to tell you that this video is for beginners. If you're a master of iPhone microelectronics, this video is probably not for you. Let's start with the tools we'll need. You can find the tools required for Face ID repair at fourphones.eu. Also, you'll find a corresponding link to each of them in the description of this video. Okay, let's get started. Since the warnings on the iPhone can be somewhat confusing, the first thing we do is a good diagnosis. Check if the failure indeed corresponds to the dot projector. We'll use this Qianli ID base machine. We connect it on the first line on the left hand side. Now depending on the model you can find it on this removable plate. If on your model it's not there you can change it. Once the flex is connected we press the second button. In the case of this iPhone 10 it tells me that the dot is fused but the fault can be four in total. Short circuit, fused, NTC brake or an I2C brake. The most common fault is that the dot projector is fused. This is the same connector on the left side that's used to copy the data from this old flex. And the one on the right side is used to paste the data into the new flex. We'll leave the old flex connected to the left side connector. The first thing we do is to copy the data and save it on the computer. To do this, we need to connect the Qianli Face ID to the Windows computer with a Type-C cable. We download the Qianli Repair Helper software from qianlispace.com and once inside the software with our username and password, make sure the Qianli Face ID device is connected. Then we click on detect chip and see that it's detected. Now we copy the data by clicking on load chip. After copying it, we'll see the message data loaded successfully and we can save it with the name we want in our computer by clicking on save file. We should then see the file was saved successfully message. Now connect the new flex to the computer on the right side of the ID face. This new flex is not a simple flex, but contains a specific microchip to save the information from the old one. We click on open file, select the file and click on local burning, while the ID face will indicate that it's writing the data. And finally, it will indicate data transmitted and write in success. Now it's programmed. We must now transplant our dot projector from the old flex to the new Qianli flex. We don't guarantee that this process will work with a non-Qianli flex if you're using the Qianli programming machine. To transplant, first make sure you have a good understanding of how the circuit part and the prism should be squared or aligned. The steps are as follows. 1. Remove the glue between the iron frame and the flex cable. To do this, we'll place the complete module in this ID face holder. Now, we pass the fine cutter 011 of Qian Li or one similar to remove the glue that's between the shielding and the dot projector with a heat gun setting of 100 degrees and an airspeed setting of 20 or the configuration that works best for you. Now, we cut the corner of the shielding. Some do it with heat. We'll do it with these fine pliers. We're very careful about any risk that exists due to the temperature. We fold the shielding and then place the complete module in this Qian Li ID face holder specifically created for this job. Separate the dot projector from the prism. Now, with a temperature of 
300 degrees and an airspeed of 10 or whatever setting works best for you, we remove the glue little by little and start removing it from the opposite end of this glass as this area is very delicate and prone to break. The heat should be enough to desolder these three points of these wires that support the dot and the prism. But if not, you can heat and touch with your soldering iron or heat the points to desolder it completely. These three points do not make any electronic connection. They only support the prism dot. Try to keep it because it's there for a reason. But if you cannot mount it because it was removed from the top glass, don't worry, it's not a major problem. On the other hand, we suggest that you leave the glue that joins the plate with the prism as it is. Now you have the circuitry deassembled. You can now remove the old flex. Before mounting it on the new flex, you have to perform a delicate operation. Place it in the holder. With the heat at 300 degrees and an airspeed of 10, remove this small integrated circuit. Remove it with this precision blade. Be careful that the circuit above and near does not become desoldered. Wait until the heat does its job job and help it a little until the circuit is removed. Step 3. Short circuit the MOS tube. Since the encryption chips of the original phone are bypassed when cracking the dot projector, we need to take the original MOS tube off and short circuit the two dots shown on the screen with a 0.01 mm copper wire. Step 4. Move the dot projector board. We reball the dot projector board with the template included at the bottom of the Kian Lee ID face holder. We put the template on the board, a little tin paste and a little heat, 300 degrees and an airspeed at 10. Now that the design has been made with the tin, a little flux, place it on the new flexor. A little bit of heat at 300 and an airspeed of 10 and when we move it the plate should be able to return millimetrically. It means that it's already soldered. We do a 3D inspection making sure that the connections between the plate and the flexor are perfectly joined. The joint must be very thin for easy installation with the camera module. Step 5. Test the new dot projector. The ID face machine should show a normal reading at all four test points. You can also make sure that the four dot lights can illuminate normally. Step six, align the dot projector board to the prism. To do this, we must ensure that we know well how they should be squared or aligned, both the part of the circuit and the outer part of the prism. If they're not well aligned, it won't work as you can see on the screen. So as we indicated before the first step, you should make sure that you know how they should be squared or aligned, the part of the circuit and the prism, and that you know how they go together. To join them, you must place a minimum amount of glue between the two. Kian Lee has one that's ideal, as it's just the right thickness to make the job easier and safer to do. Once you put the glue on, you only have a little time, but you already know well how they should be aligned, and you have practiced the union many times. So with your fingers, you can now make the union. I first did it with my fingers. After waiting a few seconds, I placed this magnetic holder so it can stay stuck for at least one hour. You can do it as well, it's more comfortable for you. Once it's stuck and well aligned, you can test that your face ID works. So far, it's going really well because I no longer get the message on the screen saying that it's not active. Okay, now let's check it. In this case, it does the first full face recognition and then it does the second full face recognition. It's perfect. This is a tricky procedure, but when you learn how to do it and start getting practiced, it will become easier and easier. Remember that to find all the necessary tools for this repair, as well as spare parts of all kinds, you can visit fourphones.eu.